Welcome to Club Prairie Fire, the home of tequila, Tabasco and the Duckworth Lewis system. Now, we are just two weeks away from this Cricket World Cup and it is really heating up. South Africa, mm. they did a job on the Aussies. England, they beat the Kiwis thanks to their uh, New Zealand and... Oh, let me start again. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, folks. <laughs> to a class nah. act that we are. Uh, you're, not, you're not starting again. You've got to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> I will pick it up. Hey, Ollie, you put your hand up, mate. You fucked up that intro royally. <laughs> Wait, have I? I, I that's a great. No, that's this right. You're not in your intros. England beat England. New Zealand thanks to their Kiwi, Ben Stokes. Oh, that's totally yeah, you're that's right. a solid joke. That's a joke. <laughs> no, you're you dead right. right. No, this is good though. This is what we've what the audience has learned is I can't read. All right. England <laughs> beat New Zealand thanks to their Kiwi. Very good. Great joke. Solid gear. And India. <laughs> beat everything in their way during the Asia Cup. To talk all things sweaty seams and sticky wickets, it's two of the best men to don the creams ever. It's Adam Gilchrist in Gilly. Where are you? Ah, uh, Yes, hello, hello. In uh, the Middle East, in Dubai. And, uh, well, there's a number of reasons why I'm out here. None the least scoping the landscape for the tequila. The El mm. Shito is going to be huge out here, chaps, but I can get to that a little bit later. Okay, very good. And uh, as well, Michael Vaughan, I, it looks like you're in Manchester by the looks of things. Yeah, uh, Chash, Chash, you're pro. Just uh, in Chester, just mowed the lawns. It's getting to that stage in the UK where you've got to get that last mowing. Uh, so I've got the last mowing. Uh, hopefully, it'll last the winter now. Who do you pay very... to do that, Vaughan? No, that's a fact. I, 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 uh, my garden didn't turn up, so I've had to do it. <laughs> Poor shit. It was one of those things. I, I don't know. In the in the pandemic, when we all had to do uh, work for the first time and do our own jobs, uh, yeah. I actually got I, I got into mowing the lawn. I enjoyed it. I've got a nice little mower. It? Yeah, it's there's nice a real then, there's a real thing in it. There's yeah, there's lawn porn nice. that you can look up. I'm 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 subscribed right. to a couple of lawn porn sites. Um, we'll get to Ray. We'll get to Ray later on with Holly oh, going about that. Bro, bro, can uh, you just go deep? What, what is lawn porn? Because I've not, I've not seen it. Lawn porn is it's for men that are into their lawns, and you can. I'm on Instagram groups. I, I go online. It's it's like close ups of lawn blades with like water on them. Uh, it's like perfect edges, perfect trimming. It's just your, pretty hot, just your, It's just your, your common cricket curator. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's not, pretty the, it's hot not the kind of. Uh, I'll be honest with you. It wasn't the answer I was hoping for. But uh, carry oh, on. sorry, mate. <laughs> Disappointing. Carry uh, on. Now, <laughs> finally, Ollie. I mean, we are all over the world today. Where the hell are you? I'm um, here, just that's the Black Sea. You can see behind me, Thracian Cliffs Golf Course in Bulgaria. Um, just doing a bit of bit of bit of work. Yeah. Um, so they, there you go. What work are you doing? What, I'm just doing some filming content on the golf course, but they were meant to have a professional be the model. He's dropped out, the Bulgarian pro, so they're actually using me and my swing, which is questionable for their social uh, channels. It, well, this will be interesting. See if you get aroused by the greens and the cut of the grass. Yeah. Yeah. You, do you mind taking I, a couple of photos for me? Oh, did, yeah. you say a, <laughs> did you say a Bulgarian golf pro? Oh, famously, yeah, Mr. Matoff. They had the 2013 World Match Play here, and uh, Graham right. McDowell beat Tong Chai JD. And they've got loads of Brazilian cuts around the greens here, so there is lawn porn everywhere. Yeah, tight, mm. tight and fast, tight and fast. See what I'm talking about. See what I'm talking <laughs> did, about. Did, did, did I, you say Matoff or Madoff? Because you got to be careful. Yeah, you got to get that name mixed up with blokes <laughs> investing in things. But anyway, uh, now. We do have, and as I said before, we got on here today. We have a genuine guest joining us for this. Yeah. Little, Little Club Prairie Fire. I've written a little bit of an intro, if you will humour me, folks. Uh, now, our guest today is a man who has represented England a whopping 191 times, a man whose personal ashes was won two zip, a man who apparently makes Ravi Ashwin jealous because he is a natural athlete, who Ravi once said, once he has finished a spell, he will not remain stiff at all. Please welcome Chris Wokes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cheers, yeah, guys. Yeah. What an introduction. Yeah, that's standing. Um, How are you doing? Was, thanks Going for coming good, on, Wokes. Did you know Ravi was such a big fan of your work? I didn't. I didn't. I have a clue. Uh, I think he just enjoys facing me in India, to be honest with you. And with an India tour coming up, <laughs> I think he's just trying to make sure that I'm uh, I'm going to be on the touring party. But uh, yeah, nice <laughs> words. Nice words from Ravi. Uh, Wokesy, uh, thanks for coming on the, the Club Prairie Fire pod. Um, no before problem. I get Gilly to explain to you what the, the pod is, 
Uh, where yeah. are you? I am in glamorous Birmingham, mate. I'm in Edgebaston. I'm locked away in one of the offices at the minute. Um, yeah, it's not it's sunny Birmingham today, to be fair. So, uh, yeah, mm. nice old home for me. Nice. Uh, Gilly, do you want to uh, let Wokesy know what we're about? Look, a club prairie fire, a prairie fire is um, a, a little nip of tequila with uh, minimum three drops of Tabasco sauce. It's a drink that pretty much got me through my entire cricketing career. <laughs> and in, in my, my ensuing 15 years of life since, it's uh, most definitely got me through there. But uh, it's all about fellowship, friendship, and um, and just talking shit, really. So that's the inspiration of this Perfect. podcast. Uh, bring bring friends and fellows together, and uh, we do a little toast at some stage if you're keen for it, and we don't want to force it onto anyone. But uh, that's it, and, and we're in hot pursuit of a tequila sponsor, so unashamedly out there seeing <laughs> nice. if we can get there. But uh, a little bit of cricket gets involved occasionally. So, mate, we are absolutely thrilled to have you. Not, I'll get it out of the way early, mate. Congratulations. Outstanding yes, Ashes series. You really stuffed it for us, did it? All it was one way traffic, two nil. It was <laughs> done. It was done. Yeah, and then Headingley, you blokes come back, you and Woody, you stuff it up for us. But Jesus, what a run, mate. What a uh, almost fairy tale, but uh, congratulations, mate. It was bloody good to watch. Cheers, mate, appreciate it. Yeah, it was um yeah, it was a weird one. I mean, I to be honest, at one point I didn't even think I was gonna get get a go. So uh to mm come in halfway through and for it to kind of go the way it did. And as you said, me and Woody, Woody were tuning it up. So uh, we'll take that. Yeah, what, what, indeed. Well, see, just on the Ashes, were, were you, you know, the first two games, obviously yeah. giving Australia a chance um, to go tune it up. <laughs> uh, did, you, did you just go and knock on Stokes' door and say, come on, let, let's unleash the Wokes now. Let's make it a bit more uncomfortable for them. No, you know what? I, I I was obviously around the squad for the first two test matches, but I I kind of left after the first first day or two, um, and I actually didn't really. I tried. Just not weren't to get... interested. Just didn't want to hang around. Or just, just... <laughs> no, I, I I was trying to be professional, Gilly, and get some cricket under my belt. Uh, ah, with, with that old Warrior chestnut. Shirt. That old chestnut. After yeah. the first tea. Yeah. Well, ca- <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Carrying drinks isn't too much fun, is it? So uh, not yeah. my age. Not my age, anyway. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I tried. Sounds daft, but I tried not to be too invested in the in the series because I didn't want to be, I didn't want to yeah. overdo it too soon, just in case I kind of got to go later on. I didn't want to have that almost, you know, the baggage of what what happens in the previous test matches when you're not playing. So I wanted yeah. to come in with a fresh mind and kind of come in fresh, fresh from a physical perspective as well. So um, no, I didn't give Stokesy a knock, but uh, I think when he he figured out he couldn't bowl anymore, it kind of worked in my favour and they kind of needed the team to balance a little bit more. So thankfully I got the nod and uh, yeah, the rest is history, I suppose. Well, see, during this entire series, it was the the term Bazball. We heard it, it was nigh on a billion times. Um, I just wanted to know, is this something that, like in a sanctum, are you guys chatting about it, going, "Hey, boys, let's go out there and give them a real baz balling," or is it more of <laughs> is it more media bullshit? Good question. No, good question. I, I think the latter is probably a good way of putting it. Um, I don't think we, you know, the, the term baz ball is banned in the dress room anyway because Baz doesn't ah. like it. So um, oh, we, uh, he loves we, it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe secretly he loves it, but uh, he definitely <laughs> does, definitely doesn't show it to us. But um, I mean, Rooty, I don't know if this has come out yet, but Rooty had those little badges made up with with Baz ball written on him, and then Baz's smiling face, and was just sticking <laughs> them on like around the dressing room randomly, like on, on Baz's kit on his mitt. Um, yeah. And every time he find one, obviously he chuck it in the bin. So. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a little bit of humour from the dressing room. But to be honest, it, it wasn't overly talked about in the dressing room. It's just kind of become the way the lads go and play. And, you know, the batters kind of lead the way, really. They go out there and try and tee off. So that's the uh, that's the go, really. Well, see, do, do you have a picture of those stickers? Because I think on this podcast, I, I think we should be wearing those stickers on our yeah, top. Buzz, yeah, nah. yeah, yeah. We're, I'm we're, sure. we're big fans. <laughs> I'm sure I can no. get a hold of Rudy to get a hold of one for me. That's for sure. We'd, we'd, we'd love a picture of that, wouldn't we, Ollie? Ollie's very good at the <laughs> yeah. admin. No, well, that means that Gilly and I then we wear the cumball badges, <laughs> and then you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! I was I was thinking more along lines. We'll just uh, put on an ashes badge of the oh, urn because yeah, we 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 we've got that. <laughs> but uh, but the, cum, the cumball, God Almighty. Gilly, Gilly, can I ask you a question? You have a cap behind yeah. you. What, 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 why have you got a cap yeah. on the pillow? Yeah, What's that's that? uh, obviously I'm 
am traveling. I'm overseas at the moment. And mm. I, I mentioned I'm in Dubai too, Vaughn, and I'm looking everywhere for Mickey's tours. But I look, we've, we've got to get that. I know she sent me the, the number of old buddy for the boat that we used to used to go and entertain us out on. Out in the, about Wokes, out Wokes, in the, have you been on the famous boat in Dubai? I don't think I've been on the famous one, by all accounts. If that's the Ooh. case, I can't remember it. Maybe that's why. <laughs> Yeah, no, you, you were on there then, you probably. Have been on there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on. Been there. Um, so, there you go. Like when we travel, we like to take little creature comforts from home, remind us of home, and it's a big weekend of preliminary final footy in the AFL. And my beloved Carlton have made it after 23 years since they've been in a prelim final. So if they win this one, they're in the grand final next week. So Is that's the final still okay. going. <laughs> still going, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I know your team. Final. Adelaide, Adelaide have been on holidays for about a month already, your team, Vaughn. Yeah. But um, anyway, that's, yeah, just got now, to support while, while the boys. We, while we do have three Englishmen on here, I wanted to ask you, Gilly, this, all this stuff of Robbie Williams coming out, singing all these songs Ooh, for yeah. the Carlton Football Club, is he on the take like you are? Is he getting paid? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'm a paid-up member. Don't give me that. I'm a paid-up member. Have been all for right, 20 yeah. years. But is, Robbie, he's taken a yeah. liking to Australian sports stars, hasn't he? Yeah, Obviously, yeah. Uh, Spurs own Aussie Ange and then Tom De Koning, who was uh, a player for Carlton for, for for you guys that don't follow it so closely. He had a big game the other day and Robbie's punched out another song. Is uh, Robbie struggling? Is, is he struggling, Robbie, at the minute? Just, I mean, what's he... <laughs> I mean, he's, he's, he's created good music in his time. I don't think he needs to be. What's it? I have, I've, heard, I've heard the Anne song. I like the Anne song. But what's the, what's the Carlton song, his song? Uh, it was to Lovers in the Air. Yeah. You know that song, Lovers in the Air? That's not even his song. Lovers in the Air. Yeah. yeah. But that's yeah. not his song. No. no. But he's versatile, Robbie. He knows yeah. the market. Now, He's picking we, songs these days. Now, <laughs> now, guys, we do we do have Chris Wokes on here to chat a bit of cricket. So let's just let's <laughs> yeah, just sorry, hear sorry, it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wokes. I, I do just want no, to on the back it. of the, on, the, on the Baz on the Baz ball discussion, which I you must be probably over all of you guys going. Geez, here we go again. But did you notice the uh, and I will highlight the victorious Australian under nineteens who decimated the England under nineteens. Yeah. Well, well, they drew really. the last test match, Gilly. They drew well, it rained. <laughs> they a one-nil series win to Australia. But of course, oh, no, yeah. morally, you guys have got it. We'll concede yeah. the moral ground every time. But <sighs> did you happen to notice the scoring rates in those test matches? They were all at about five and a half, six and over. It is, it's completely infectious. It's changed the landscape. The young yeah. punks now. So it's going to be an entertaining time in the future. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I think, um, you know, I think naturally... You know, white ball cricket and the way the youngsters play white ball cricket now has kind of, I suppose, moved into test into the test game. And then I think naturally the way, you know, I'd like to think the way our guys have played over the last 12 months has certainly had an impact on on the way people are trying to play the game. And, um, you know, if yeah. that's filtering down the system to to our younger lads uh, and younger you know boys and girls, then it's, um, you know, it's exciting to watch, isn't it? It's certainly, oh, I, yeah. I, I watch it that way. And, uh, you know, they're certainly taking note, aren't they, by the looks of it? Well, actually, the last thing I wanted to ask you about the Ashes before we move on, obviously, to the World Cup, which is why we're here. <laughs> but there was a theory floated on this podcast um, by your esteemed colleague, Michael Vaughan, who claimed the reason why you guys didn't have a beer with the Aussies after that last test is because the Australian cricket team is the most boring bunch of human beings on earth. <laughs> is... <laughs> this is what Vaughan, he said you were hiding in there waiting for them to leave. Is this... Is there any truth to this, or is this just Vaughny being Vaughny? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know what answer you want. I well, in fact, I don't know what answer you want me to give here. But I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna go down the route of saying that's Vaughny being Vaughny. Um, I, I definitely, I definitely can't say that the lads are uh, the most boring, boring Australian side to ever we're ever played they're, against. They're, they're up but, there, though, Wokes, aren't they? With the most boring, <laughs> just stuck there. But look, I. If you're, if, you're, if you're deeming on the field to off the field, then I, you know I can maybe vouch for that. But not off the field. There's uh, there's some good good lads in there. I feel like it's very different maybe to the older days where the we're supposed we're supposed to absolutely hate the Australians and they're supposed to hate us on and off the field. <laughs> I feel like we get on pretty well off the field. So you know it's a shame it didn't happen. I suppose. Yeah, well, well, we're the we Australians are just uh, that the Aussies. It can't be that boring. I mean, would you rather sit around in a boring old change room or get out into the nightlife of London at the end of the series? Come on. <laughs> what are you going to do? 
Choice well, you out. Yeah, fair. <laughs> well, we all, we, all, we all caught up there anyway, so we shared, sure, shared yeah. a beer nonetheless. Yeah, very good. good. Now, guys, is there anything else, Ashes, or can we let Wokesy just let that one go to his review mirror, or can we move on to the Cricket World Cup? Uh, no, well, not not Ashes. I don't want to go to the Cricket World Cup just yet. But, well, see, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, in Dubai at the moment. And I know Vaughn is accusing me of being literally on a party tour. But I am out here working. I'm a brand ambassador for the University of Wollongong, one of the Australia's uh, fine establishments that has... Do, uh, they, want to, do a, they want to sponsor the pod, Gilly, or <laughs> are you just giving them a plug? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that the Vice-Chancellor has partaken in a prayer if I yet on this mm. tour, so I'll have to see if I can get her uh, to, to, to invite. But um, mm. I noticed, mate, uh, on your on your Instagram, Wokes, you, or should I call you Dr. Wokes? That's um, it, mate. University of Birmingham. You've got the honorary doctorate, so... Have That's you put right. that, uh, that degree to great effect? Not quite just yet. Not quite just yet. But I've uh, I've done the gown, done the hat. Yeah, you know, I, I, I didn't do it as a youngster going through uni and all that sort of stuff with cricket. So um, no, it was nice, yeah. nice touch. Obviously, um, Birmingham being home for me, it was uh, a nice sort of touch from them and a nice day for for myself and and for my family. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I I do feel a bit of a fraud, you know, stepping up there and receiving <laughs> a. Uh, an honorary doctorate when um, you've got some hardworking students actually uh, coming there on their uh, the graduation day, and I just step up and you know give this token speech and, and take away <laughs> take away. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't, well, you see, look don't, sharp. Don't, you look sharp. Don't, don't do yourself out there. I mean, uh, my daughter's a student, and all she does is get pissed every day. So they're doing nothing but get, get pissed. There you go, and that makes me feel a bit better. Yeah. Ollie, you have you got a little something for us? A little nugget. Now, Wokesy, the oh. way that Ollie worked is. Basically, to explain his what he does is we say things and then he goes in and researches all our lies and then tells us how we're bullshit. <laughs> so <laughs> this is we'll see what he's got here. And it's actually before we move on the cricket world cup, Gilly's done some of the work because I was going to bring up socials. That's my job. We're at Club Prairie Fire, and before we move mm. on, to that, they've been kicking off last week because of some of Vaughan's comments, which have got us another million <sighs> oh. views. Where Vaughan yeah, is, nice. Virat, Virat Kohli can never be considered a great cricketer unless he does it in the Yorkshire leagues, which is <laughs> kind of, <laughs> and, and actually, it, interestingly, so that got a million views. Interestingly, then Gilly has been called out for some comments on Kohli, um, which yeah. we need to address on, on this is a Club Prairie Fire. Uh, Lokesh Shiny, who is verified with a blue tick, so you know it's real. Um, mm. And he actually does have a red flag in his name. Kohli is being rested on a regular basis these days, and I think they want Sachin's record to be unbeaten. Apparently, Adam Gilchrist said that, <laughs> and he's retweeted, "I've never said this." So there's a lot of there's a lot of drama <laughs> around Kohli. Explain. Oh, in, indeed. But uh, I think, and I'm going to steal the line of our, our erstwhile professor here, who he saw that my response to that tweet. I've never said that. And Prof, what do you say? Maybe it was the F forty five, Adam Gilchrist, yeah. the mistaken identity. <laughs> so I might bo- I might borrow that line on on my socials and throw it out there. That could reignite it again. Well, but Vaughny, you know how to light a flame, buddy. Yeah, I like it. It's yeah, good. yeah. Ali, Ali, can you just check up on? Uh, I'm pretty sure Adam Gilchrist said it on the podcast last week. Yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> can, we check, can we check up on that? I mean, I'm, I'm honestly, my ears are a little bit dodgy these days, but. <laughs> You know, if, if there was ever a set of ears that would would hear his own voice, Gilly, Mate. you would hear that yourself. That's why I'm surprised you saw the cat behind me behind the ears. Are you serious, Vaughn? I, I did wonder, did I throw it out there in jest last week? But I don't know. Might have done. I mean, Ollie, no. please. I don't remember it. I, I, no. don't, I don't remember. No. But the listeners do no. know from Chris Wokes, who has played on a wet Tuesday night in studs in Yorkshire. Yeah. What do you, is, is that tougher than a turning deck in India? Can Kohli be considered one of the greats? And it's got to come from a current player, I think. Well, I think the chirp that you're going to receive in the Yorkshire League is just unbeaten, isn't it? There's, there's no, no it's unprecedented. You're not copying that anywhere else in the world. Yeah. So you could say that. Maybe we need to see it. I mean, I feel like he's a bit too far down his career to to venture back to the Yorkshire Leagues, but it would be good to see. I'd enjoy I'd enjoy mm. watching that. I'd tune in. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it works. Yeah, I, I, how's Virat going to cope? Taking his guard, trying to scratch his mark and sliding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, how's he, how, he going to cope with that? And he's going to cope with a 45-year-old keeper just effing and blinding at him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's not going to be able to cop that, is he? No, nah, I tell you what, he's not, he's not going to cop me. He's not going to be able to change his gloves every three overs either. That, that's not going to go well. 
This, is, yeah. this sounds a no. lot like Vaughny is doubling down. That's what this sounds like. And <laughs> yeah. You might and, as well. You, and you can mark I'm sticking this sticking with it. I'm and sticking the, with it. In the leagues in the UK, is it if you get the 50 or the 5 for a, or the 100, do you still have to buy the jug and shout the bar and all that? Is that all those traditions have continued yeah. on? Because he'll be Let's broke. <laughs> As far as I'm aware, yeah, he's gonna have to uh, he's gonna have to put some money behind the bar. That's for sure. Hey, yeah. Wes, did you, when when you started back in the day in the county game in the seconds, you know, you'd have been yeah. playing in the league as well, and you get a five foot, you'd, you'd send someone around with a cap around the ground to get some <laughs> yeah. money, and, and you'd get given the money for a fifty or a hundred. Did anyone at Warwick used to with the young kids coming <laughs> in? Used to, you know, so I, I got a fifty in the second team when I, I don't know seventeen, and the coach said, "Oh, you know, you, you can go around with a cap." <laughs> and I went, oh, what do you mean? He said, oh, it's like the leagues on a Saturday. I went round the ground, and I think it was at Todd and Creek Club with a cap getting my own money. <laughs> oh, remarkable. That is remarkable. It completely stitched me up. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you copped it from the senior players there. Oh, oh God, yeah. 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 <laughs> Shocker. Well, very, very good. Now, we do, Wokesy, we, you know, we don't want to waste too much of your time here. We do need to <laughs> chat all things World Cup. You guys obviously had the winning series against England. Um, we all New Zealand. That, uh, New sorry, Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand. Come, on. Yeah. Come on, pro. Apart. I made it. Sorry, Wokesy. <laughs> you play for England. You played against New Zealand. <laughs> well, it's hard. So there's, a couple clear, of Kiwi, there's Kiwis everywhere, isn't there, in both sides. So you, I understand I get why confused. you're getting mixed up uh, there. Bro. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You had a 3-1 win over New Zealand, Wokesy. We all saw that, um, well, what would you say, old Stokesy has blown out the ring rust. He, uh, <laughs> in that third game, was that, it's three games back after announcing he's back and he's, he's getting 182 off 124. Um, very interesting for you guys in that your first and your opening match is against New Zealand, the opening match of the World Cup. I guess having said that, do you think you've worked out a bit of a match plan against them now? Was that, was that a good thing? Uh, I mean, we always knew, obviously, we were coming up against them in this four-match series and then, you know, come first game of the World Cup, we were obviously up against them in completely different conditions, I suppose, we must add. Um, so I don't mm. think it'll have any any effect. I mean, there's likely to be a completely bit of change, you know, in both teams come that first game in terms of, you know, people playing their best 11. Um, you know, the Kiwis certainly will have a few changes. So, uh, you know, I don't think we can really read too much into it. But naturally, obviously, it's good for confidence for the team moving into into a World Cup. But, you know, we're not, we're not stupid. We're not, we're not daft. Uh, we've been around for a while that it kind of effectively going to mean nothing. And whoever wins on or whoever turns up on October 5th is where it, you know, really counts. So, uh, you know, all eyes on, all eyes on that fixture. Well, so the, the World Cup, I mean, you, you go to India quite soon. You play that first game on the 5th of October. The final is November the 19th. I think somewhere around that time. So it's, yeah. it's quite a long uh, period of time. I mean, we, we've had a bit of fun on the podcast about, you know, I, I've been saying all summer that the England golf team have, have, have drawn with, with Australia's cricket team. <laughs> but in, on a serious note, going to India, all the travel, how are you going to switch off? In the UK and other places, it's very easy to switch off. How are yeah. you going to switch off in India? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. It's going to be, it will be a tough, tough tour. I think we're fortunate that we've got a lot of guys that have been to India quite a bit before, um, you know, know what to expect. A uh, very experienced team from that side of things. A lot of guys obviously play IPL and stuff. So, you know, everyone's got their own ways of switching off. Uh, as you said, there's a lot of travel, travel days and stuff. Um, you know, guys use different things. There's a lot of, there's, there's a card, bit of a card school going on nowadays. Ooh, I like that. And actually, recently they've been playing this game called Peruda. You ever heard of Peruda? Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Peruda, 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 yeah. The dice. Peruda has yeah. been a big, a big hit. So that's um, that certainly yeah. be uh, taking up a bit of time. And uh, there's a, you know, there's a bit of a coffee club going. We take a machine, so the guys get around each other there. I think golf clubs are definitely going to be taken. Uh, so you know. But everyone's got their own ways. You know, a lot of people like to, to lock themselves away and other people like to get amongst it. So, um, yeah, everyone will be, you know, be fine, I'm sure. Well, so can we just go through those um, different ways of switching off? So, who, who's the barista? So, main barista will be David Willey. Um, D. You know, Willey. He's, yeah, he's top barista. Um, I'm kind of trying to, trying to catch him up and learn a few tricks. Um, right. <laughs> who else have we got? I'm just what, what what does he do well other than make you know what what makes yeah, his make coffee good, so good? He's, yeah. he's just 
meticulous in, in his in his preparation for one. Like, That's doesn't good. leave a stone mm. unturned. You know, he has to weigh out his beans if it's not quite right at oh, the time. Wow. Extraction, right? Extraction time. <laughs> he uh, he starts again. So he's 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 uh you know he's he's proper religious on it. So uh you know he's <laughs> he's, he's our go-to guy. But like you say, he's la- his his latte art is. Top does he so, does he just when he when he pours the milk and, and yeah does he put a shape in there as well does he oh yeah yeah he can do the lot he can do it once he does his heart there's a tulip he's trying to learn the swan oh wow oh he's different gear Wokesy, have you guys ever <clears throat> tried manus labuchain's coffee mm. the runs club well unfortunately i don't think we've ever had the invite to be very nice <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you wouldn't turn it's an up. In- He's boring his pig shit, so you wouldn't be bothered going there. <laughs> I, I just, I thought it was an interesting name for a brand for coffee, calling it yeah, the Runs the Club. Runs Club. Yeah, I mean, it goes well in India. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Now, now works So the the card school. Who who's in the card school? So we've got the Bristol uh, D Willie. Yeah, Bristol D Willie card school will probably be run by Ali. Uh, yeah, Mo. Um, Mo, Mo, yeah. Yeah, Joss will be in the card school. I think Stokesy likes his cards. Um, mm. And what what game and, are we playing well, in the card school? What what are we playing? Is it nomi nomination? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that. the, that's the go to. That's the go to. Um, in the test team, uh, the chairman is Zach Zach Crawley. So um, Zach a youngster, Crawley. and he's 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 ruthless. Yeah. He is. He's I savage. Would, I <laughs> would say I, I know his dad Terry, and Terry's quite a handy gambler on the golf course. So I say Zach could be quite handy at gambling with the cards in hand. So he's basically a chip off the old block, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So we've got the cards. So we've got D. Willie at the Bristol. What about Peruda? Who's yeah, who's Peruda, Peruda again? Again, Mo, Mo and Ali. He'll back himself in that. He claims to be <laughs> claims to be number one. Yeah, Mo, <laughs> Mo, 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 Mo carries the carries the uh, carries the game with him. So he's um, he's in charge. It's a good game. Some fair, good I, should add, I should add, I should add that you know wherever Mo goes, Rash goes. So they come as yeah. a combo. Rash. They come as a combo. Yeah. Very nice, a good combination it is, and all important in this World Cup. Um, there's always some unlucky uh, people that don't make the boat uh, or the or the aeroplane. In this case, on tours, particularly around the World Cups, folks. And obviously, Jason Roy. Uh, we we all couldn't believe that Harry Brook wasn't sort of in those initial squads, and we thought it was a matter of time till he did. Someone had to make way. That that's an emotional out, isn't it? Given the journey and the way he helped resurrect white ball cricket in in the UK. Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. Um, you know, in a way, obviously, I'm I'm good for Jason, and you know, devastate for him. Um, you know, it's you don't want anyone to miss out on you know a final fifteen of a World Cup. Um, yeah. you know, I suppose there's always tough decisions to make, and you know that squad was always provisional, I suppose, to begin with, and yep. you know we all kind. Of, I think every player in that squad, you know, bar a few, were probably just. You know, itching to to get out there and put in a performance to try and make sure they were on that on that plane. And you know, unfortunately, I suppose he's he's the the one to miss out. And it's, you know, as I said, I'm I'm gutted for him because you know he's he's been a big part of the team and and changing the way we played it back in you know at the end of the 2015 World Cup, moving through through the years to yeah. to winning that one in uh, in 2019. So you know, I mean, of course, it's a big call to leave out a player like Jason. He's a world class player, but you know, I suppose. You know they've they've got their reasons, and I suppose David Milan's kind of you know mm. form in the recent series may have may have added to that. So um, yeah, obviously devastated for Jason, but you know tough call. Yep. Well, see, yeah. as the champions, and obviously the T Twenty champions, you, you go there with a huge expectation, rightly. The, the way that you've played White Ball Creek for a number of years now has been incredible. Um, if I said to you, there's just one team that you know you're going to have to beat to win this World Cup, which team's it going to be? Well, um, I mean, uh, you, you could probably name four, couldn't you? Because I genuinely think there's probably you know one of potentially five teams that could easily go on and win this comp. You know, you've got to you've got to perform mm. well over a long period of time. We touched on how long the tournament is. You've got to play everyone. Um, but I think naturally, with the tournament in India, you know, you, you'd probably say India are the are that, are the te- that team that you'd, you'd single out potentially. Um, you know, naturally, when it, whenever it becomes a, a white ball competition or you know a World Cup, you know India are always up there as favourites or, or, or there or thereabouts. So you'd probably say them in in home conditions. Uh, but you know, Pakistan will be tough in in those conditions as well. Australia always turn up at 
uh, World Cups. I know you. you know, I thought, thought we were going to get a mention there. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, then, and then finally, I, I genuinely think South Africa are going to be a, a team to beat. I think they're looking incredibly strong, and I know they've supposedly got this record at World Cups, but um, I think they're going to be a tough side to, to beat. Mm. Definitely. Uh, that well, was the well answer. We, that, that, that's the answer we wanted, India, because we're, yeah. we're just about yeah. we're just about hits on this show. We're nearly done. <laughs> well, yeah. well, we, we we had Mitch Marsh come on a couple of weeks ago, and he yeah. we asked him who the the two teams in the final would be, and he said Pakistan and Australia. <laughs> and, uh, needless to say, his social media lit up a touch. So I think you're okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. I think you've chosen I, look, the right you, team you, there. You, you got to think. You got to remember. There's an IPL auction coming up soon. You can't be got to be well, talking yeah. about these things. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it works yeah. Just, just on the IPL. So you opted out last time, didn't you? Yeah, mm. I did. I you're, did hope, yeah. you're hoping to go in this time, and, and how does it? How do you get back in if you know like, if you missed out last yeah. time? Yeah. So I mean, it, it's quite simple. Last year, I didn't. I didn't. Um, enter my name into the auction so therefore you can't be can't be picked up um you know this year i, I definitely will be looking to to put my name in the hat and try and get myself a team um yeah. hopefully hopefully get picked up in the auction and have another go at, at ipl so um yeah I, i'd obviously love to go again so fingers crossed well talking of t20 leads i read with interest your name was thrown in amongst it saudi arabia do, do yeah. you need me to do some do, do some handiwork for you while I'm in the Middle East, folks? Do you want me to get up the road? Well, it sounds like you might know more than me about that, to be really honest. Um, <laughs> it's came out, out of the blue, that. And, uh, yeah, I can go on record saying that, you know, that's that's absolute news to me and my agent. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. But I, that's, I, that's the first I heard of it was when I saw my name in the paper. So <laughs> that's that. That's Wokes that same what, F45 what, what? Adam Gilchrist guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Wokes is coming. laughs> that's right. Well, so this this podcast is becoming quite powerful. So what we're going to try and do is, is is get into the Saudi league. Obviously, you've not had that that kind of contact yet. That was a misleading story. But we're going to try and get you a, a Ronaldo deal. Oh wow! Absolutely. <laughs> we're, we're after for, for you, Wokes. So and now you've been on the pod, bro. That's right, Ollie. You've got some contacts over there, Ollie in Saudi. Yeah. Yeah, that's the next maybe, golf course. Maybe, yeah. you know, coming on this pod is the break I needed. And maybe that, that's well, well, I, I, there you I go. think with, you, you can grow a good beard, so you're just going to have to lose the beard, but uh, get the tash, the big, big tash mm. going, and you may well land yourself a contract There's as the, the ambassador head. to El Chito. Yes, yes, that's it. Travis, unfortunately, we had to just strike him off the list to be ambassador for our uh, tequila company because he shaved his bloody moustache off the idiot. Yeah. Foolish. Foolish, foolish. Now, yep. 20, can we quickly, Wokesy, just talk about your 2019 World Cup campaign? Yep. You in particular, um, I was having a little look today. You had a very nice outing for that entire campaign. And one one thing in particular, the catch, the Rishab, Rishab Pant catch. Can you, if you haven't seen this, you've got to go online. It's It's an unbelievable catch and it swung that whole match. He was sort of holding things in the balance and he took that catch. Can you just tell us, how calculated that was or how much of a fluke it was? <laughs> well, my first thought was like, how unlucky can Rishabh be that I've pulled off a catch like that? Um, yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, uh, I'd actually had a half-decent tournament with, with, the, uh, with the, the old mitts, to be honest. Yeah, I took a few decent catches in that comp, so I think my confidence was high. And uh, I remember thinking to myself, having bowled at Rishabh quite a bit in the past, I thought deep square leg, I was, I was you know firmly in the game. So I was... for. You know, for a rare occasion, I was actually switched on uh, out in the deep, <laughs> and uh, I just remember thinking one of those vivid moments where you think you're going to get, a, you're going, it's going to come to you every ball. So I, I was switched on, and uh, thankfully ran round, and you know, to be honest, I just dived out and stuck, stuck my mitts out, and thankfully it stuck. But um, yeah, poor guy, it's <laughs> unlucky for me to take a catch like that. <laughs> one one of the all time catches, and then in the semi against the Australians, you came out and got player of the match. With uh, with your three for twenty, dominated the Aussies. That's um, not yeah, that difficult, yeah. pro. That's not difficult these days. <laughs> 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 Got to be fair. Yeah, no, it's, it's very firm. That was firmly one of my firmly my favourite um, games. I reckon I have played in it. You know, it was here. It was at Edgebaston. Um, you know, what, obviously a home ground, and you know, I had a lot of people in the ground that day that were, were close to me and friends and family and stuff. So to put in a performance on a, on that sort of stage, you know, at home was was special. And then obviously again in the final, another three wickets. Um, 
dominated again. Yeah, um, I mean, that was a, yeah, that was a nice been... pitch to bowl on, that one. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you close to getting thrown that ball for the super over? Were you edging towards Stokesy? Uh, I, I'll tell you what, the relief. The relief when, <laughs> when he tapped when he tapped Jofra on the shoulder and said, "It's you." You should have seen the weight just lift off my shoulders. I was like, "Thanks for that." But um, yeah, it was um, yeah, that was a, an amazing day. One of the most stressful games, obviously, I've ever been a part of. Um, you know, just a, a mad occasion, and uh, you know, to look back and you know, I know we tied the game. Yes, before you mention it, no, no stress there. But um, yeah, it was a, uh, amazing, amazing. Uh, Amazing game to be a part of, and you know, hell of a day, hell of a day. Well, so when England gets to the final, it goes to a super over in India. Um, <laughs> Jofra's not there, or he's not there at the minute. He's there as a reserve. Who you are, who you thinking is going to stick the hand up to bowl that super over to probably beat India? Oh, to beat India? Is that is, mm. it, is it me? And, us and India in the final? Is it? Uh, yeah, I've already. You know, I've already yeah, said yeah. that. So I never, it will yeah. happen. Yeah, <laughs> I'd never happen. shy away from it, Vaughn. So I'd. Certainly, certainly put my hand up. Whether I'd be chosen or not, who knows? See, that's uh, going to be. If, if you think about it, that's going to be some year because we've got obviously the man of the series in the Ashes. He, you know, well, he won England the Ashes, didn't he, Ollie? <laughs> that's yep. correct. Uh, <laughs> and obviously, and bowling the Super over, that'll go down as one of the great cricket in years for a, an individual player. Well, I mean, if you'd called it here first. I'll be recalling this conversation, and you know, well, after giving you a pat on the back for this, because if that happens, yeah. that'll be uh, pretty remarkable. Maybe you should put a little, uh, maybe a quid on that, because you'll get decent odds. <laughs> well, well, maybe we have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to know uh, so much chat about Brendan McCollum and what he's done. What's Matthew Mott like? What's his sort of demeanour around a team? Yeah, Motty's, um, as I, was, I mean, Motty, I'd say, quite a bit quieter, um, you know, goes about his business on, you know, not in a, well, just in a quiet sense, you know, he, he goes around, speaks to the guys behind the scenes, but, and then kind of speaks to the group, you know, when he feels he needs to or when it's required, um, you know, he's obviously yeah. taken over a very experienced uh, white ball side that has had quite a lot of success, but I think there's quite a lot of difficulty in, in doing that as well, because, yeah. You know, he didn't want to come in and change change it from, from day one, I don't think. You know, I feel like he'd have probably potentially lost a few players by doing that. So, he, you know, very mm. respectful in the way he's come in and, and gone about his business. He obviously has a very good relationship with Joss. You know, Joss leads the team very well, does quite a lot of the, yeah. the talking as well. Um, and I think they bounce off each other quite well. You know, Joss, although he's got this quite kind of quiet, soft demeanour, he can be quite ruthless on the behind the scenes um, and then yep. I think Marty can kind of be the good cop, bad cop sometimes alongside him so um, I think they've, they've worked alongside each other very well Yeah, I, I, I would find it quite ironic if Marty was trying to tell you blokes how to play white ball cricket because <laughs> uh, he was one of the great stodgy boring batters you've ever seen so I'm glad he's letting the guys unleash yeah. the range and go for it yeah. wait, wait till he next t- tells me that my strike rate's not quite good enough I'll, uh, oh, I'll remind mate, him of that slap one. him away yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well see I'm, I'm intrigued with uh, leadership and particularly in this era where you've got um, two different coaches well, more, more importantly, you've got two captains. So you've got Ben Stokes, who's been a revelation with the Test team and, and, and has transcended the Test match game. How hmm. does he then just fit in to the one-day group with Joss being the captain? Is is there ever a moment where you kind of forget who the captain is and, and kind of yeah. look at, oh, Stokes, it's not your day, actually. It's Joss's day yeah. to be captain. Yeah, you know what? I've never I've never looked at it that way. Um, you know, obviously, Ben's come back into the group and he's, he's fitted in as if he would normally, you know, prior to when he was hmm. captain. Um I think it's always good to have leaders on the field, regardless of who's captain. So I think it'd be good for Joss to potentially occasionally bounce ideas off off Ben if required. Um, you know, or if Ben comes up with an idea, he can you know run it by Joss, and you never know, Joss might go with it or he might not. Uh, you know, Joss is very much his own sort of guy, own captain, and you know, strong minded, so he'll do his own thing. But um, you know, I've only played three Test matches under Ben, so it's not quite got to that stage yet. But you know, this this group and um, has played together for such a long time that everyone kind of just fits in nicely, regardless of who's captain, to be honest. And Joss has got his kind of go-to guy in Moen as well, who's played a lot of white ball cricket with him. So they kind of bounce ideas off each other a lot. Yeah. Now, nice. What, yeah, very good. Now, Wokesy, we um, 
we've kept you probably long enough, but what we like to do to finish this podcast, now, unless anybody else has a question for Wokesy before I drive us into this quiz. I've got a little one, actually, <laughs> just, just, just yeah, before Ollie. then. Um, yeah, so we mentioned Saudi, and I've just got to give the international cricket update very quickly um, because yeah. they are obviously playing in the Golf T20 Championship in the UAE, um, mm-hmm. and Saudi are bottom. They're struggling, um, but PNG win again. They are flying and beat Hong Kong. Um, so that's very important. Also, the T20 Cricket World Cup in the USA and Windies is being played at Grand Prairie, Dallas, which is very oh, yes. Mexico, very near Mexico, um, which is, is going to be incredibly exciting. But the question from all of this is, Chris, for you, we had Mitch Marshall on, and one of our panel, and we won't name them, um, has famously been on Raya recently. None of the Australian team are on Raya. <laughs> are any of the England boys on Raya? Because we've got someone who can get them on. So we want to know. Uh, I'm just trying to think. I, I need to be careful here because there's not many single guys left in the, in the, in the team. <laughs> um, so... No, as far as I'm aware, no, I know, I mean, going back, I know Reese Topley was on Raya and he, he may have met his, his current girlfriend on Raya, but other than that, I'm not too sure. I don't get involved so, so, with so, 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 what you're saying is people do have success on Raya. Did have success on Raya. Raya right, yeah. so, yeah. Ollie, you, you've still got a bit of a, you know, a bit of hope. Yeah, that was a few years ago. It's been, it's been broken mention, for a while. Mention no names. Oh, <laughs> And and during the week, Ollie decided in our WhatsApp group just to give us a little update and send a couple yeah. of uh, lovely profile photos. But Ollie, did you write that? Was it your quote that said, "If you like cricket, we're going to be a good chance." So I, I've, I've, I've retired. I've retired from Raya um, because it was broken oh. for four months. Because it's four months, so I've gone to Hinge. I've, I've gone to Hinge and and, and a lovely. <laughs> And a lovely lady called Frankie has liked me, and her profile is "We will get along if you like cricket." That's her profile. Oh, oh, in the star. Yeah. Now, Wokesy, do you mind if Ollie puts on his profile that he knows Chris Wokes? Is that cool? Can we? <laughs> Absolutely, no stress for me. Whether it whether it gets him any more matches or not, I'm not sure, but he's happy to go for it. Ollie, Ollie, can you can you add that to your profile, please? Just yeah. so we have that. That's good. I'm back on. I'm going to add this picture so they know. This yeah. is add, add, <laughs> I, now you know Mitch Marsh and Chris Wokes. So you've got. When you're in Australia, you're sorted, and in the UK. Now, yeah. well, see, what we do like to do on this show, we like to finish with a quiz. Um, okay. Each week, it's got something to do with a, well, current event, current player, current guest. Are you okay to hang around for another five minutes? Because you'll never yeah, guess what the of topic of today's quiz is. Oh, yeah. Ollie? Yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. We're playing Chris Wokes Trivia. So five oh, questions God. in a tiebreaker. Yeah. And they, as always, will involve Gilly or Vaughny or both of them, okay? So okay. Um, everyone, so we'll do each question. You'll play as well, Wokesy, and we'll get the answers. Profs on scoring. So yes. um, question one, who has the highest strike rate in tests? So that's between Wokesy and Vaughny. So you two will play this for a <laughs> You two <laughs> Who has the highest strike rate? Oh, so I, I, like, so I like this. Me, yeah. I'm sorry to cut you off. But the bloke that's just been saying how boring Australian cricketers are, I reckon he's in real danger here. <laughs> no, but I, I, I'm, I'm going to debate that because I reckon Wokesy in his time has played some backs to boring the wall. Stone wall <laughs> winners. Yeah, yeah, back in the day when we used to play for draws. Yeah, I reckon so- Wokesy's on the rounds. I think it's closer than you think. But well, I still so, think Wokes is better. Wokes yeah. is slightly me, but... higher. Wokes, Wokes is higher. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chris Wokes, 53.05. Oh. Mike Warren, 51.15. Oh. <laughs> there you go. It's close. It's close. Is it really 53? It's 50. It's, 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 I need yeah. to sort that out. Otherwise, I'm getting, not getting yeah, in the yeah. team, am I? No, no, they, won't pissed, mate. they won't let you in. <laughs> okay. Well, rolling on to question two. Who has the highest strike rates in ODIs between Wokesy mm-hmm. and Gilly? Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Gilly. I think I know mine, or roughly know mine, Ooh. and I think Gilly's definitely Ooh. higher than that. Am I answering this as oh. well? No, just the ones playing. No. Oh. Nice. This is this is very confusing, oh, think... Ollie, for scoring. No. Nah. Right. It's one nil Wokesy. It's one nil. No, no, it's, it's one one. It's, it's one, one nil Vaughny. No, it's one, one all. Yeah, one all. One all. Yeah, we got Honestly. it right. One all. I'm I'm actually going to go against myself here. I think the batting position might have just lent itself to um, 
to Wokesy being in charge there. Chris Wokes, 89.85. Oh. Adam Gilchrist, 96.94. Oh, uh, well, easy, look at Gilly. So Wokesy to yeah. 21. That last Gilly series doesn't help me there. I reckon I scored about five runs off about 30 balls. So that that's not ideal. <laughs> okay. So we've, we've, we've rolled into question three. Um, Wokesy gets two chances to win each time, which is nice. So what number is higher? Yeah, number of <laughs> balls bowled by Chris in ODIs and test matches or the number of balls faced by Vaughny in ODIs and test matches. Balls bowled. <laughs> First of balls faced. Face. <laughs> well, so wait a minute. So Wokes is balls bowled in bold. test matches. And ODIs. And ODIs. And ODIs. Oh, so, you've, so basically, you've to how many balls you faced. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Simple. So I'm going, I mean, I'm going have, Wokes. I mean, I'm going Wokes. I mean, Wokes is surely. Vaughny Wokes, just, Chris? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. Me. I was just going to ask Warney how many how many games he actually played, but no. I, Chris, I played eight. What is his test on one day? Is? Yeah, one forty. One. Yeah, one fifty. I reckon I played. You, you, uh, you both one six. I'm going to go oh, me. I'm going to go me. I'm going to go me. It's got to be Wokesy. Wokesy, one thousand. Sorry, thirteen thousand nine hundred and seventy-six. Yeah, Michael Vaughan. 106 more. 14,082. Wow. 14,000. Only 106 in it. Boy, that feels like in. a lot of bloody balls, that. <laughs> oh, a lot of balls for not, it's a lot of balls for not enough runs. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing? So, uh, no, no change you what, score. You've just, you've just made my body, my body feel a hell of a lot sore. Yeah. Uh, you're you're feeling balls. good, Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> Ollie, how um, long did it take you to count all those up, mate? Yeah, I've got lots of free time. <laughs> since since I've left Rayo, I've got a lot of free time. Um, number four. <laughs> Frankie Between... sent them through to him. <laughs> <laughs> Onto the pod, Frankie. Between Wokesy and Gilly, number four, who's had more not outs in test matches? Oh, no. Gilly. Gilly. No. He got out all the time. Hang on. I mean... How many tests? You played 48 tests? Works yes, there or 48, 48, yeah. Uh, I'll go me. I'll go me. I reckon I just hung in a few times for a bit of ink. <laughs> yeah, Gilly, <laughs> to had, Gilly's had 11. Chris Wokes yeah. has 15 not out. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah. Jeez, oh solid. yeah. Solid. Just get Jimmy yeah. on strike and then I'm, I'm good yeah. to go. Yeah. <laughs> So score update, right. go to the last question, Prof. 3-1 zip. 3-1 zip. So just, who? What has you mean? I'm, I'm so confused. <laughs> Wokesy right. is three, Vaughn right. is one, Gilly is nil. I mean, this is the most confusing quiz we've ever yeah. done. You're asking yeah. certain people certain questions. Yeah. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah, it's like, no, I'm going smoothly. <laughs> who, who has got the highest ODI score between Vaughn and Wokesy? Vaughn. Have, have you got 100, Wokesy? Can oh. I reveal that? Don't answer, don't answer, don't answer, don't answer, answer that. This is what he does, mate. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say Vaughn. Do not answer it. Vaughan. I reckon you got. A, I reckon you got a 98 somewhere. Or was I? No, you got 100 in Test cricket, didn't you? Mm. You got 100 at Lords. <laughs> that's why they sing that song about you and they bar me up. Oh, oh Jesus! This is a great question. This I've just had a look, quick look at the stats. This oh, is a terrific good. question. <laughs> But don't take too I, long. It's a podcast. I reckon, I, reckon, I reckon we got the I, I'm guessing we got the same score. I reckon it's a stupid question. That, no. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh trick it's question. Not a stupid question. It's Michael Vaughan, 90 not out. Chris Wokes, 95 not out. Hey, oh. Oh. <laughs> Where was your 95? I, I was commentating nice. that game. It's, uh, sorry, Trent Bridge. Trent yeah. Bridge well, it was the tide, that was the tide game. What yeah. was that? That's tide right. Yeah. Chasing what, a lot. What, how many needed? Yeah, how many needed when you were sitting on 95? Was there an option to get there or did someone so, else smack we a needed, full? We needed, we needed 10 off two. We needed 10 off two to win. Yeah. I blinked to three. We managed to run a three, which moved me to 95 not out. So I was at the non-striker's end. Needing seven yeah. to win off the final ball and Plunkett hit a six. So tied for That's tied right, game. yeah. I remember the punks, yeah. Brilliant. Unreal. Very good. Very good. So that, Very nice. So that means Wokes is pissed the quiz, is it? He's pissed oh, the quiz. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Wokes, he he's finished a, on he's four. He's had a good year. 
Yeah, Vaughan won. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank yeah. you that, very much. That year, that tw- that twelve months is just getting better and better. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Vaughan is onto yeah. something about this super yeah. over. I'm telling you, yeah. Wokesy, uh, player of the podcast. So congratulations on that win. Yeah. There. Hey, thank you. Um, all that's left to do, Gilly, apart from thank Wokesy and wish him good luck in the World Cup, is our toast. Yes. Yeah, that's right. There's a little ceremony uh, just at the back end, typically. Um, Wokes, it's. Uh, I think you're about to do some training, so I, I don't think you need to embark on <laughs> one of these. And I'll, I'll just knock this to you. You got a little cup of coffee or tea there. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough, it, yeah. mate. But uh, and a little bit bad form by me. Um, I actually couldn't find any tequila in my hotel room, but I've got a little Tanqueray gin. So Tanqueray, if you're listening and want to come on for a podcast, let us know. But I'll um, <laughs> just put a splash of that. But um, but of course, the uh, mandatory three drops of. Not only could I not find any tequila, I thought, I've got no bloody Tabasco sauce. But I ordered some room service before we started the podcast. The tray comes in, the little mini Tabasco sauce oh, bottles on the quality. tray. How good is that? It's that neat is to quality. be. Oh, geez, so anyway, um, as we do, a little toast, mate. Thank you, Wokesy, for coming Cheers, on. Cheers, guys. A toast, a toast to your Ashes effort. That was outstanding. And, and he's looking forward to the super over. <laughs> At uh, the Narendra Modi Stadium, 120,000 <laughs> screaming Indians. Wokes gets it done but doesn't get out alive. But anyway, mate, well done, buddy. Cheers, Cheers Wokes. Thank, Thank you. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's got awful, Wokes. It is gone. Yeah, this this, this, this star star that as well. It's getting, it's getting worse. <laughs> it, 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 it used to have the vanilla in it. There's no vanilla in that shit. 